वेलकम टू दी ऑनलाइन क्लास ऑफ प्रोफेसर एस के पॉल एच ओ डी यूनिवर्सिटी डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ इंग्लिश बी आर ए बिहार यूनिवर्सिटी मुजफ्फरपुर डियर स्टूडेंट्स ऑफ पी एच डी कोर्स वर्क गुड आफ्टरनून टूडे आई एम गोइंग टू डिलीवर माई लेक्चर ऑन क्रिटिकल अप्रोचेज टू लिटरेचर दिस विल फिक्स द एरिया एंड द स्कोप फॉर योर रिसर्च हेंस फोर्थ critical approaches to literature reveal how or why a particular work is constructed and what is what its social and cultural implications are understanding critical perspectives will help you to see and appreciate a literary work as a, a multi-layered construct of meaning reading literary criticism will inspire you to reread rethink and respond soon you will be a full participant in an endless and enriching conversation about literature first post colonial literature post colonial colonial literature is a type of cultural criticism post colonial criticism usually involves the analysis of literary texts produced in countries and cultures that have come under the control of european colonial powers at some some point in their history alternatively it can refer to the analysis of texts written about colonized places by writers hailing from the colonizing culture in orientalism in 1978 edward said a pioneer of post colonial criticism and studies focused on the way in which the colonizing first world a uh, first uh, post colonial criticism and studies focused uh, on the way in which the colonizing first world uh, has invented false images and myths of the third post colonial world stereotypical stereotypical uh, images and myths that have conveniently justified uh, conveniently justified a western exploitation and domination of eastern and uh, middle eastern cultures and peoples in the essay post post colonial criticism in the essay post colonial criticism published in 1992 homi k bhava has shown how certain cultures uh, uh, represent or misrepresent uh, 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 in the essay post colonial criticism published in 1920 1992 homi k bhava has shown how certain cultures uh, misrepresent other cultures at uh, their by extending their a uh, political and social domination in the modern world order post colonial studies a type of cultural studies uh, refers more broadly to the study of uh, cultural groups practices and discourses including but not limited to literary discourses in the colonized world the term post colonial is usually is usually used broadly to refer to the study of works written at any point after colonization first occurred in a given country although it is sometimes used uh, more specifically to refer to the analysis of texts and other cultural discourses that emerged after the end of the colonial period after the success of the liberation and independence movements among feminist critics the post colonial perspective has inspired an attempt to recover whole cultures of women uh, here to uh, here to for ignored or marginalized women uh, one marginalized uh, women who speak not only from from a uh, colonized places but also from the colonizing places to which uh, many of them fled post colonial criticism has been influenced by marxist thought 
by the work of uh, uh, Michael Foucault, whose theories about the power of discourses have influenced the new historicism and by deconstruction which has challenged not only hierarchical uh, binary oppositions uh, such as West, East uh, and North, South but also the notions of superiority associated with the first term of uh, each opposition. Structuralism. Structuralism is a theory of a humankind in which all elements of human culture including literature are thought to be parts of a system of science. A critic Robert Schultz has described structuralism as a reaction to modernist alienation and despair. European structuralists such as Roman Jacobson, Claudi Levi-Strauss and Roland Barthes before his shifted toward among others among others uh, sought to recover literature and even even languages literature and even uh, language language uh, from the uh, from the isolation um, isolation in which they had been studied and to show that the laws that govern them govern all signs, uh, from road signs to articles of clothing. Uh, structuralism was heavily influenced by linguistics, uh, linguistics especially by the pioneering work of uh, Ferdinand de Saussure. Uh, Saussure. Uh, particularly useful to a structuralist was, uh, uh, was Saussure's, Saussure's concept of a phoneme, the smallest basic speech sound or unit of pronunciation and his idea that uh, uh, phonemes exist in two kinds of relationships uh, diachronic and uh, synchronic a phoneme has a di diachronic or horizontal relationship um, uh, relationships uh, diachronic and uh, synchronic a phoneme has a, a diachronic or horizontal relationship with those other phonemes that put that proceed uh, that precede and follow it as the words appear uh, left to right on this this in a particular uses utterance or narrative what saucer a linguist called Farrell uh, Farrell a French a French for word a phoneme has a, a synchronic or vertical relationship with the entire system of language within which individual usages utterances uh, or narratives have meaning what Saussure called uh, lang French for tongue as in a native tongue a meaning language and and uh, it means that it uh, it means what it means in English because uh, those of us who, who speak the language are plugged into the same system. Think of it as a, a computer network where different uh, individuals can access the, uh, the same information that uh, in the same way at a, a given time. A following saucer, a Levi Strauss, uh, an anthropologist, uh, studied hundreds of myths, uh, uh, breaking them into their smallest uh, meaningful units, which he called uh, my themes, removing each from its uh, diachronic relations with other my themes in a single myth, such as the myth of Oedipus and his brother. He vertically aligned those uh, my themes that uh, he found to be a homologous uh, a structurally correspondent uh, he then studied the relationships uh, uh, within as well as between vertically aligned uh, columns in in an attempt to understand scientifically uh, through uh, through ratios and proportions uh, those thoughts and processes that humankind has shared uh, both at one particular time and across time. Uh, whether Levi-Strauss was uh, studying the structure of myths or the structure of villages, he looked for recurring uh, common elements that transcended the differences within and uh, among cultures.
a structuralist followed a saucer in preferring to think about the overriding lang or language of myth in which each my theme and my theme constituted myth fits meaningfully rather than about isolated individual perils or narratives. A structuralist also followed saucer's lead in believing that science systems must be understood in terms of binary oppositions, a, 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 a proposition later disputed by post uh, structuralist Jax Derrida in analyzing myths and texts to find uh, basic structures. Uh, structuralists uh, found that opposites, uh, opposite terms, uh, terms uh, uh, modulate until they are finally uh, resolved or reconciled by some uh, intermediary third term. Thus, a structuralist uh, reading of Milton's Paradise Lost, uh, 1667, uh, might show that uh, the war between God and the rebellious angels becomes a rift uh, between God and sinful, a uh, fallen man, a rift that is healed by the Son of God, the mediating third term. Although structuralism was largely a European phenomenon in its origin and development, it was influenced by American thinkers uh, as well. Uh, Noam Chomsky, for instance, who uh, powerfully influenced uh, structuralism through uh, works uh, such as Reflections on a uh, Language in 1975, identified, identified and distinguished between surface structures and deep structures in language and linguistic literatures, including texts. Marxist criticism. Marxist criticism is a type of criticism in which literary works are uh, viewed as the product of work and whose uh, practitioners emphasize the role of class and ideology as they reflect, propagate, and even challenge the prevailing social order, rather than viewing texts as uh, uh, repositories uh, for hidden meanings. Marxist critics uh, view text as a, as material products to be understood in broadly uh, broadly historical terms in short literary works are viewed as a product of work and hence and hence of the realm of production and consumption we, we call economics marxism began with karl marx the 19th century german philosopher best known for uh, das capital published in 1867 the seminal work of the communist movement. Marx was also the first Marxist literary critic writing critical essays in 1830s on such writers as, uh, as Johann Wolf, uh, Wolfgang von Goethe and William Shakespeare. Even after Marx uh, met Frederick Engels in 1843 and began collaborating on overtly political works such as the German ideology, of 1846 and the Communist Manifesto of 1848. He maintained a keen interest in literature. In the, in the German ideology, Marx and Engels had discussed the relationship between the arts, politics and basic economic reality in terms of a general social theory. Economics, they argue, uh, provides the base uh, provides the base or, or infrastructure of society from which a superstructure consisting of law, politics, philosophy, religion, and art emerges. The revolution anticipated by Marx and Engels did not occur in their century, let alone in their lifetime. When it did occur in 1917, it did so in, in a place unimagined by uh, either theorist Russia, a country uh, long ruled by despotic czars, but also enlightened by the works of powerful uh, novelists uh, and playwrights, including Anton Chekhov, Alexander Pushkin, Leo Tolstoy, and Fyodor Dostoevsky. Russia produced uh, revolutionaries like uh, uh, Vladimir Lenin, who shared not only Marx's uh, interest in literature, but also his belief in its uh, ultimate importance. 
a Leon Trotsky, a Lenin's comrade in revolution, took a strong interest in literary matters as well, publishing Literature and Revolution in 1924, which is still viewed as a classic of Marxist literary criticism. Of those critics active in the Soviet Union after the expulsion of Trotsky and the triumph of Stalin uh, to stand out. Mikhail Bakhtin and George Lukacs. Bakhtin viewed language, especially literary texts, in terms of discourses and dialogues. A novel written in a society in flux, for instance, might include an official legitimate discourse as well as uh, as well as one infiltrated by challenging comments. Uh, comments. Lukacs, a Hungarian who converted uh, to Marxism in 1919, appreciated pre-revolutionary realistic novels that broadly uh, reflected cultural totalities and were uh, uh, were uh, populated with characters, uh, uh, characters representing uh, representing human types of the author's place and time. Perhaps because Lukacs was the best of the Soviet communists, uh, writing Marxist uh, criticism in the 1930s and 1940s, non-Soviet Marxists uh, tended to develop their ideas by publicly opposing his. In Germany, dramatist and critic uh, Bertolt Brecht uh, criticized uh, Lukacs for his attempt to enshrine realism at the expense uh, not only of the other isms but also of poetry and drama, which Lukacs had uh, uh, largely ignored. Uh, Walter Benjamin praised uh, new art forms ushered in by the age of uh, mechanical reproduction, and Theodore uh, Adorno attacked. Uh, Lukacs for his dogmatic rejection of uh, a non-realist modern literature and for his elevation of content over form. In addition to opposing Lukacs uh, and his of and his uh, uh, overtly uh, constrictive canon, non-Soviet Marxists uh, uh, took advantage of insights generated by non-Marxist critical theories uh, being developed in post-World War II Europe. Uh, Lucien Goldman, a Romanian critic living in Paris, combined a structuralist, a structuralist uh, principles with Marx's uh, base uh, superstructure model in order to show how economics determines the mental structures uh, of social groups which are reflected in literary texts. Goldman rejected the idea of uh, individual human human genius uh, choosing uh, instead to see works as the collective products of trans individual uh, mental structures french marxist <coughs> french marxist uh, louis althusser uh, drew on the ideas of uh, psychoanalytic uh, uh, theorist uh, Jacques Lacan and the Italian uh, communist uh, Antonio Gramsci, who discussed the relationship between ideology and hegemony, uh, the pervasive system of assumptions and values uh, that shapes the uh, perception of uh, reality, uh, reality uh, for people in a given culture. Althusser's followers included Pierre C. Uh, Machery, uh, who in a theory of uh, literary production in 1966 developed Althusser's concept of the relation, relationship between literature and ideology. Terry Eagleton, who uh, proposes an elaborate theory about how history uh, enters texts uh, which in turn may, uh, may alter history. And, and Frederick Jameson, uh, who has argued that uh, that form is but the working out of content in the realm of the superstructure. Feminist criticism. Feminist criticism became a dominant force. Feminist criticism became a dominant force in Western literary studies in the late 1970s. 
uh, when feminist theory both uh, broadly conceived was applied to linguistic and literary matters since the early 1980s a uh, feminist uh, literary criticism has developed and diversified in a number of ways and is now characterized by a global perspective a uh, french feminist criticism uh, garnered much of its inspiration from simone de uh, beauvoir simone de beauvoir's uh, seminal book uh, la uh, la deus me uh, sex the second sex published in 1949 uh, uh, beauvoir simone de beauvoir argued that associating men with humanity uh, more generally as many cultures do delegates women uh, to an inferior position in society a subsequent french feminist critics uh, writing during the 1970s acknowledged uh, uh, beauvoir's critic but focused on language as a tool of male domination analyzing the ways in which it represents the uh, the world from the male point of view and are going for the uh, development of a, a feminine language and writing although interested in the subject of uh, uh, of feminine language and writing north american feminist critics uh, of the 1970s and early 1980s uh, began by analyzing literary texts not by abstractly discussing language uh, via close textual reading and historical scholarship uh, one group practiced uh, feminist critic uh, examining how uh, women characters are portrayed exposing the patriarchal ideology implicit in the so-called uh, classics uh, and demonstrating that uh, attitudes and traditions reinforcing systematic masculine dominance are inscribed in the literary canon another group practiced um, uh, what came to be called uh, gino criticism uh, studying uh, writings by women and examining the female literary tradition to find out how women writers across the ages have perceived themselves and imagined reality while it gradually became customary to refer to an anglo-american tradition of feminist criticism british feminist uh, critics of the 1970s and 1980s objected to the tendency of some uh, north american critics to find universal or essential uh, uh, feminine attributes arguing that differences of race class and culture uh, gave rise to uh, crucial differences among uh, women across uh, across space and time uh, british feminist critics uh, regarded their own critical practice as more political than that of uh, uh, north american um, feminists uh, emphasizing an engagement with the historical process in order to promote uh, social change by the early 1990s, uh, the French, American, and British approaches had so thoroughly critiqued, influenced, uh, and assimilated one another that uh, rationality no longer automatically signaled a, a, a practitioner's approach. Today's critics uh, uh, seldom focus on women as a relatively monolith monolithic category, rather they they view women as members of different societies with different uh, with different concerns. Uh, feminists, uh, feminists of color, uh, a third world, preferably called post-colonial uh, feminists and lesbian uh, feminists have stressed that women are not defined solely by the fact that they are female. Uh, other attributes uh, uh, such as religion, class 
and sexual sexual uh, orientation are also important uh, making the problems uh, and uh, goals of one group of women different from uh, those of another many commentators have argued that uh, feminist criticism is by definition a gender uh, gender criticism uh, because of its focus on the feminine gender but the relationship between feminist and gender criticism is in fact uh, complex the two approaches are certainly not polar opposites but rather ex exist along a continuum of attitudes towards sex sexuality gender and language <coughs> 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 Gender criticism. What is gender? Gender criticism sounds like a euphemism for something. Uh, something. In practice, it is a euphemism for uh, several things and more than that. One of its sub subtexts is gay and lesbian criticism. <clears throat> Now, there can be no mystery about uh, why that highly uh, stigmatic uh, level, though increasingly common, uh, should be self-applied, uh, self-applied uh, with care, however, however uh, proudly by those of us who do this scholarship. Uh, for instance, I almost never put gay and lesbian in the title of the of undergraduate gay and lesbian studies uh, courses so i i always use the words in the catalog copy <clears throat> to ask students to mark their transcripts uh, permanently with so much as the name of this subject of study uh, would have unpredictably uh, disabling consequences for them in the future the military most churches uh, 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 in the future, the military, most churches, the CIA, and much of the uh, psychoanalytic establishment, to mention only a few plausible professions, are still unblinking about wanting to exclude suspected lesbians and gay men, uh, while in only a handful of places in the U.S. does anyone have uh, even nominal legal protection against uh, the routine denial of employment, housing, insurance, custody or other rights uh, on the basis of her or his perceived or supposed sexual orientation. Within and around academic institutions as well, there can be similarly persuasive reasons for, for soft selling the challenge to an operation whose legal, institutional and extra uh, and extrajudicial extrajudicial sanctions extend uh, uniquely quite uh, uninterruptedly 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 up to the present besides uh, code uh, naming a range of gay and lesbian uh, lesbian a uh, cantered theoretical uh, inquiries, gender studies also stands in a usably unmarked uh, relation to another rubric, uh, feminist uh, studies. Feminist studies might be defined as the study of the dynamics of gender definition, uh, inequality, oppression and change in human societies to the extent that gender is thus at the uh, definitional center of uh, uh, feminist uh, studies, uh, gender studies can sometimes be used as an alternative name for, <coughs> for feminist studies, euphemistic only in, in not uh, specifying as the feminist level uh, more than implicitly does how far in inequality, oppression and struggle between genders uh, may be seen as differently constituting, uh, differently constituting uh, gender itself. Women's studies today is commonly defined at least in practice by the gender of its object of, uh, of study at, 
at uh, at any university women's studies will not cross uh, list uh, list courses cross list courses unless a majority uh, a majority of the texts uh, uh, read are by women by contrast to women's studies uh, feminist studies whose name specifies the 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 angle of an inquiry rather than the sex of either its subject or its uh, uh, its subject or its object can make and indeed has needed and uh, needed to make the claim of having uh, as privileged uh, a few of uh, male as of female cultural uh, cultural protection what uh, what then can uh, or does distinguish the project uh, of gender studies from that of feminist uh, studies in some cases as i have suggested gender studies is another equally appropriate way of uh, designating feminist studies the reasons for offering the emollient name or name are no more than tactical in other cases however gender studies can mean a feminist studies a minus feminism or in another version of the same deadening equation women's studies in the most uh, positivist meaning of the term uh, plus uh, some mm, compensatory entity called men's studies also the offer an illusion of enhanced uh, in, uh, inclusiveness uh, these are the arithmetics that can give a uh, gender studies a sinister sound uh, to the every uh, scholars most involved in active gender critique the assumptions behind these usages usages uh, are intellectually as well as politically satisfying to assume that the study of gender can be defin uh, definitionally uh, detached from the analysis and critic uh, of gender equality oppression and struggle and that is from some uh, some form of feminism ignores among other things the telling at uh, the telling fact uh, that gender analysis uh, uh, per se uh, became possible only under the pressure of the most pointed and political feminist demand that genders are constituted as such not only in dialectical relation uh, to one another but in relation to the oppression historically exercised by uh, one over over the other other is a uh, knowledge repressed by this impulse to what the separate but equal things get even worse uh, when the uh, rational for an and then additive uh, gender studies agenda involves uh, not a nominally depoliticized and positivist study of women as women and men as men but rather the conscious promotion of uh, masculinist uh, viewpoints under the men's studies uh, rubric as a remedial balance against uh, feminist one it seems uh, then that uh, in so far as gender studies actually is the study of gender its most substantive and intellectually respectable meanings make it coexist and make make it co extensive uh, with feminist studies and gender criticism uh, co extensive with feminist criticism uh, where in that case to uh, look for the distinctive projects of gender criticism beyond its uh, overlap with the feminist criticism let me suggest that the most uh, distinctive uh, uh, task of gender criticism not uh, uh, coextensive uh, with feminist uh, criticism may be not to do gender analysis but to explore what resists it to ask uh, with respect to certain uh, categories that can be a uh, priori uh, disentangled from gender nonetheless uh, what uh, isn't gender
gender criticism might (uh) here be taken to (uh) to mean and (um) then not criticism through the categories of gender analysis but criticism of them mapping of the factual (uh) (uh) mapping of the fractal and border lines between gender and its others and if gay and lesbian criticism is so far the typifying side of such a interrogations of gender analysis then the first (uh) other of gender (uh) gender would (uh) seem to be (uh) in this defining its stand sexuality formalist criticism literature is a form of knowledge with the intrinsic elements as style structure imagery tone and journal (uh) second (uh) what gives a literary work (uh) work status as art or as a great work of art is how (uh) all of its elements work together (uh) to create the reader's total experience the thought feeling gut (uh) reactions et cetera) third the appreciation of literature as an art requires a close reading a careful a step by step analysis and explication of the text the language of the work and analysis may follow from questions like how do various elements work together to shape the effect on the reader four style and theme influence each other and can't be separated if meaning is to be retained uh, it's uh, this in interdependence in form and content that makes a text literary extracting elements in isolation theme character ploy setting etc uh, may destroy a reader's aesthetic experience of the whole formalist critics don't deny the historical political situation of a work they just uh, believe works of art have the power to transcend by being organic wholes akin to a to to being with a life of its own formalist criticism is uh, evaluative in uh, in that it uh, differentiates great works of art from poor works of art other kinds of criticism don't necessarily uh, concern themselves with this uh, distinction formalist criticism is decidedly a scientific approach to <coughs> literary analysis focusing on facts uh, amenable to a uh, verification evidence in that in that text <coughs> now next approach to literature is critical literature is biographical criticism a real life experience can help shape either directly or indirectly a uh, real life experience can help shape either directly or indirectly an author's work understanding an author's life can help us better understand the work facts from the author's life are used to help the reader better and underst- better understand the work the focus is uh, always on the literary work uh, under investigation biographical criticism begins uh, with the simple but central insight that literature is written by uh, by actual people and that understanding an author's life can help readers more thoroughly comprehend the work anyone who reads the uh, reads the biography of a writer quickly sees how much an author's experience shapes both directly and indirectly uh, what he or she creates uh, reading that bi- bi- the reading that biography uh, will also change and easily deepen deepen our response to the work sometimes even knowing a single important fact uh, fact illuminates our reading of a poem or a story learning for example that josephine miles uh, was conf- was confined to a, a wheelchair or that a weldon weldon keys 
committed suicide at forty one will certainly make us ah pay attention to certain aspects of their poems we might otherwise have missed or considered unimportant. A formalist critic might complain that he would also have noticed those those things through a careful textual analysis but biographical information provided the practical assistance of of underscoring subtle but important meanings in the poems. It may be helpful here to make a distinction between biography and biographical criticism. Biography is strictly speaking a branch of history. It provides a written account of a person's life to establish and interpret the fact of a poet poet's life. For instance, a biographer would use all the available information and not just personal documents like letters and diaries but also the poems for the possible light they might shed on the subject's life. A biographical critic however is not concerned with recreating the record of an author's life. Biographical criticism focuses on explicating the literary work by using the insight provided by a knowledge of the author's life. Quite often biographical critics like Brett C. Miller in her discussion of Elizabeth Bishop's One Art will examine the traps of a poem or a story to see both how the work came into being and how it might have been changed from its autobiographical origins. A reader however must be biographical interpretations cautiously. Writers are notorious for revi for revising the facts of their own lives. They often delete uh, embarrassments and, in and invent uh, accomplishments while changing the details of real episodes to improve their literary impact. John, John Cheever, for example, frequently told reporters about his sunny, privileged youth. Sunny, privileged youth. After the author's death, his biographer, uh, his biographer Scott Donaldson, uh, discovered a childhood scared uh, by a distant, uh, distant mother, a failed alcoholic father, and nagging economic uncertainty. Likewise, Cheevers. Uh, likewise. Uh, likewise. Likewise, Cheevers outwardly successful uh, adulthood was plagued by alcoholism, sexual promiscuity, and family tension. The chilling facts of Cheever's life significantly changed the way critics, uh, uh, critics read his stories. Now, historical criticism. So, just I have, uh, I have previously discussed um, biographical uh, criticism. So, some example I give. Isolation of Emily Dickinson as revealed in her poems, um, <coughs> poems, Walt Whitman, a lover of death. And second example is a portrait of the artist as a young man <coughs> and, and other book, a biographical study of David Copperfield. So, a portrait of the artist as a young man is a biographical study of David Copperfield. Now, historical criticism. Historical criticism investigates the social, cultural, and intellectual context that, that produced it. Uh, this investigation includes the author's biography and the social milieu. Historical criticism often uh, seeks to understand the impact of a work in its day and it may also explore how meanings change over, over time. Historical criticism explores how time and place of creation affect meaning in the world. Historical criticism seeks to understand a literary work by investigating the social, 
cultural and intellectual context that produced it, a context that necessarily includes the artist's biography and milieu. Historical critics are less concerned with explaining a work's literary significance for today's readers than with helping us understand the work by recreating as nearly as possible the next meaning and impact it had on its original audience. A historical reading of a literary work begins by exploring the possible ways in which the meaning of the text has changed over time. The analysis of William Blake's poem London, for instance, carefully examines how certain words had differed <coughs> connotations for the poem's original readers than they do today now. It also explores uh, the probable associations an 18th century English reader would have made with certain images and characters <coughs> like the poem's persona, the chimney sweeper, a type of exploited child laborer who fortunately no longer exists in our society. Reading ancient literature, no doubt, uh, no, uh, no one doubts the value of uh, <coughs> historical criticism. <coughs> there have been so many social, cultural, and linguistic changes that some older texts are incomprehensible without a scholarly assistance. Now, next point is, next approach is psychological criticism. These critics told the belief that great, uh, great literary truthfully <coughs> <coughs> reflects life and is a realistic representation of human motivation and behavior. Psychological critics may choose to focus on the creative process of the artist, the artist's uh, motivation or behavior or analyze fictional characters, motivation, and behavior. <coughs> Modern psychology has had an immense uh, Modern psychology has uh, had an immense effect on both literature and literary criticism. Sigmund Freud's psychoanalytical theories changed uh, our notions of human behavior by exploring new or controversial areas like uh, wish fulfillment, sexuality, the unconscious, and, re uh, repre uh, and repression. Freud also expanded our sense of our language and symbols operate by demonstrating their ability to reflect unconscious fears or desires. Freud admitted that he himself had learned a great deal about psychology uh, from studying literature. Sophocles, Shakespeare, Goethe, and Dostoevsky were as, Im as important to the development of his ideas as as were his uh, uh, clinical studies. Some of Freud's most influential writing was in broad sense uh, literary criticism, such as his psychoanalytic examination of Sophocles' Oedipus. And then uh, you uh, uh, mythological criticism, next approach. Mythological criticism studies recurrent universal patterns underlying most literary works, for example, the hero's journey. It combines insights uh, from a variety of academic disciplines, anthropology, psychology, history, comparative religion. It concerns itself with demonstrating how the individual imagination <coughs> shares a common humanity by identifying common symbols, images, plots, etc. Mythological critics identify archetypes, symbols, characters, situations, or images evoking a universal response. Mythological critics uh, look for the recurrent universal uh, patterns underlying most literary works. 
myth and narrative uh, for a definition of myth and and uh, and a discussion of its importance to the literary imagination mythological criticism <coughs> <coughs> Mythological criticism is an inter, is an interdisciplinary approach that combines the insights of the anthropology, psychology, history, and com and and comparative religion. If psychological criticism examines the artist as an individual, mythological criticism explore explores the artist's a common humanity by tracing how the individual imagination uses <coughs> myths and symbols common to different cultures and peoples <coughs> and you can also study uh, mythic uh, um, archetypes <coughs> you have studied mythology now mythic uh, archetypes <coughs> say lucifer in shakespeare's othello <laughs> Now, that instance is a mythic archetype or Caliban and Caliban and Prospero. Marxist or sociological criticism. These critics examine literature in its cultural, economic and political context. They explore the relationship between the artist and the society, how might uh, uh, the profession of, uh, of uh, authorship. Marxist critics assume that all art is political. The next and the last approach is uh, is sociological criticism. Sociological criticism examines literature in the cultural, economic, and political context in which it is written or received. Art is not created in a vacuum. Critic uh, Wilbur Scott observed, "It is the work. Uh, it is the work, not simply of a person, but of uh, an author fixed in time and space, answering a community of which he is an important because uh, because articulate part." Sociological criticism explores the relationships between the artist and society. Sometimes it looks at the sociological status of the author to evaluate how the profession of the writer in a particular milieu affected what was written. Sociological criticism also analyzes the social context of uh, literary works, uh, uh, what cultural, economic, or political values uh, a particular text implicitly or explicitly promotes. Finally, sociological criticism examines the role the audience has in the shaping literature. A sociological view of Shakespeare, for example, might uh, look at the economic position of Elizabethan playwrights and actors. It might also study the political ideas expressed in the plays or discuss how uh, discuss uh, uh, discuss how the nature of an Elizabethan theatrical audience, uh, which was usually all male, unless the play was produced at court. Help determine the subject, tone, and language of the place. Uh, this way, dear students, I have finished my lecture. I have completed my uh, lecture today, and thus I have uh, finished.